to Biggie's Gospel Show. It's a very brilliant morning here. Forgive me for my usual norm. Trying to uh, make my hair. Hey, have you been? I hope you've been amazing. You've been, I hope I hope you've been brilliant as we've come to celebrate Father's Day so it's yes, actually yes 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 this is celebrating Father's Day I think this message will be very very um it comes in handy it's most appropriate it's coming from your father in heaven and uh yes uh, without much more further lives to dive into the word I'd like, I would like us to talk about hey 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 it is likes betraying me during the show, but no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Every time, but I shall condemn. I shall condemn. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. Uh, today, let, I would like us to talk about uh, your sins being God's responsibility. Your sins being God's responsibility. And our three verses, Isaiah forty three twenty five. It says, "I, even I, am He." Right. <laughs> You guys, I am he, God is saying that, I am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake. And I will not remember your sins, other than say no more, I will not remember your sins no more, right? So God is saying, I, even I, it's his responsibility to blot out your transgressions. That's the New King James Version. The message version says, but I, yes, I am the one who takes care of your sins. That's what I do. And I don't keep a list of your sins. Now, growing up in the Catholic Church, oh, yeah, yeah, they used to tell us how God has a list of all the things we've done, and then hell fire is just burning and he's finding it like this, getting ready for you. Or, or you know, or is usually call him in Uganda here, yeah, we call him Liso Dene, big eye watching over what so ever funny thing he's been doing, and he's ready to bring judgment upon you. So, Nowhere has it ever been preached that it's God's responsibility to build out our transgressions. Even in church, you used to say, you messed it up, you have to go, you have to buy dance. And, and generally, it's, we were born into this. Adam and Eve began all this and someone inherited it. So I think God was like, mm, you don't deserve this. You don't, you don't deserve this. You don't deserve this. And, and, and yes, in the Old Testament, we see how it was somehow man's responsibility to carry this one job is to sacrifice uh, animals for his children is to say I'm not sure what my children are doing so let me just sacrifice that God has peace with them yeah but but it had shortcomings because even then yeah, he still lost them um, if I'm to use the example of the Israelites you know Moses Aaron yes uh, people messed up Abraham messed up but then we don't see God keeping a list of the things we don't see God is saying, uh, you lied that Sarah was just as rich as your wife. He did not. He also didn't even mention Sarah that anyway. About Isaac, but it's okay. Let, let me let me just let me let the slide. Um for Moses, you remember we had Aaron, the high priest, and then you know it's like it's the high priest who, who tried to carry on that responsibility, the mantle, the burden to to uh get rid quote unquote of the sins of the people but even them they failed moses got angry he he was he 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 was in that position he got angry he, he smote the rock twice yet god told him to speak to it and of course god had to him so god was saying you know what i'm tired of using man let me go do it myself let me bear the burden of my children myself and that's what we're here to talk about today and uh, the, the basics why does god want to do this for himself because he didn't want you to fear him. Remember, in, 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 if you read through the book of Exodus, I think Numbers or Deuteronomy, there's a point where the Israelites pissed God off. And so, I don't know whether they pissed God off or Moses off, but all, all in all, the earth opened up and so all these people and they died. 3,000 of them. 3,000. Guys, I just saw that happen. There is a way I'm going to have fear. Not the fear of, I'm going to be so scared of God that. When he comes to seek me, I will just be like, oh, and that's not good. I want that. Good. I want to just, you know, he's your father, your father's day. He's your father. I don't think you who is watching and you have a child, you would enjoy your child or not being afraid of you. I don't think that would be nice. You know, and we've seen so much of this happening in many families. Um, 
especially the adopted side or maybe someone is taking care of a child who's not their own biological there is always that fear and it's not healthy it's not healthy at all and so god is coming to us today to let us know that i've dealt with your sin and you don't need to fear me you can approach me boldly ah lovingly without ah, guys anyway let me let me let me let me clarify let me elucidate what god wants us to, to know uh, about him um he says i am he that blots out your transgression the word blot means uh, obliterate to obliterate means to remove something completely leaving no trace of a thing right it means wiping out destroying now if that word means all these things imagine your sin being wiped out removed completely uh destroyed leaving no trace um wow no trace the picture that comes to my mind is burning a paper you know when you burn a paper ashes and then the wind blows them away there is no trace of it you can't find the sin and if god is saying i've destroyed your sin you have no right you have no right to 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 look it up to risk 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 Res- ha, what's that word resuscitate you can't resurrect it like, you know you've burnt the paper it's ashes you can't be it's a it's a physical change it's not a chemical change a chemical change is where things are irreversible candle wax melting you can bring it up but burning a paper my friend my friend ash has gone it has gone there's something that's happened to your sin it is gone and god wants you to know that it is destroyed so that you don't have to come with him with that mentality every time you want to pray you come with the pattern you think it's going to you know wallop you or flog you for for the things that you've done and he provided a measure because we saw that he was tired of using man so he said let me try let me come down and do it myself now how he, he says that um he says that it's me who blots out your transgressions for my own sake how 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 did you know it how why why is it for his own sake and not your own sake who is watching me well if you know that god is of course omnipotent omniscient he's all-knowing right so if he's all-knowing that means he knows your past present and future things and yet he wants to love on you put yourself in god's shoes at this point and imagine the person you love you know every fault is going to be every mess up is good you know every the many times they're going to disobey you know every 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 one of them what are you going to do what are you going to do about it god does this now of course now you're in god's shoes right so what god did was to decide to forget of course he knows everything but it's so amazing that he decides to forget your wrongs in advance in advance because what he wants to love you so he, he has become a fool he has made a fool out of himself because i mean if the only person who deserves the right to judge you for doing right or wrong has decided to forget you then there is no other person else on earth who has the right to judge you like you get because i mean unless they're higher than god which whereby there is no there's no other god about but but, but but him and 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 let me clarify this if um if god only forgave your past then that means when jesus died that would only have applied for those people who are living in that time when he died but jesus died two thousand years ago that means if you believe that a death that happened two thousand years ago obtained your salvation then you can also believe that that same death obliterated your sins even those you haven't committed yet 2000 years ago in advance in advance in advance after all like i've already said jesus died for the people he died that time but then he saw you coming in the future so if it can work for you in the future that means if you stand from his point of view your sins can also your sins were paid for in the past for your future like because you came 2000 years later like when jesus already died that means oh, Guys, I, I hope it's making sense. <laughs> I'm so happy it made sense for me. That means he saw all the foolish things you would do and just said that, you know what, I'm going to pay the price right now. So when you come and then you're jumping up and it's like, ah, ah, I already saw it coming. And I already dealt with it. Hallelujah. Your future sins are gone. He has, because if he says, um, I will not remember your sins. Your sins, he didn't say your past sins, your present sins. No, your sins as a whole, as a whole. Do you, as a whole, do you, do you understand what this 
these guys. Oh, wow. Wow. I'm blown away. I'm so blown away. It's it's good news. It is good news. He says, I don't keep a list of your sins. I don't keep a list of your sins. Now, in the Old Testament, if we saw that, okay, uh, we saw a version of God, right? When he got hurt, um, he, he saw men through a lens. There's a crack in the lens, you know. Uh, uh, and so, you know, he, it's like he started expecting disappointments over and over again from the Israelites. He kept on saying, you did this, you did that, you did this, you did that. Of course, but it's not his fault that he was seeing them that way. It's them who asked him to judge them according to their standard, the human standard. And so he brought the standard to them. And, and so now they, they told him not to judge them according to his standard. His standard was mercy and love. And now God is bringing back that same standard again to you. So, yes, God would maybe forgive them every time they sacrifice an animal, but then he would not forget. Now, as being made in his image, we too can forgive people, right? But we easily don't forget. But now, what we've just seen right about now is that God is saying, I don't keep a list of your sins. So, he's, in other words, he, in the New Testament, when he comes... He repeated, he repeated that because when you're speaking to the Israelites, you're speaking in the future tense. I will, I will, I will. And so you are the will he's talking about. You're now in the future of what he promised those people. This promise is, of, is to you as well. So he's, so in the New Testament, when he says, I will, um, when he comes and he's saying, I will not remember your sins, that means he's going to both forgive you according to what Jesus did. And then he's going to forget. You know how we used to say, forgive and forget. And we, and we say, we're human, we can't forget. I think you can, if you've been made in the image of God. And if, of course, God used to forgive and not forget. Now we say that he can forgive and he can forget. That means you can as well, if you choose to. If you are one with God. If as you the Lord is one spirit with him, First Corinthians 6, 17. I believe you can forgive and forget. I believe that. I believe that. So, um, when it comes to the New Testament, yeah, uh, First Corinthians 35 says, um, love keeps no record of wrong, and then we know that God is love. You're in the same image, that means you also love. That means you also ought not to keep a record of wrong. If you're a parent, your child has done this, don't keep a record of it. I pray by God's mercy that you do not keep a record of it because children, um, such small things keep children far from you. You know, they will come up another time and say, ah, oh, if I ask money from mommy, she will say, I screwed up last time so I can't go back. So I beseech you by the mercies of God to, to not keep a record of wrongs because as your father, you have to keep, um, you have to pick that from him. You have to learn from him because that's his image, his image is love. And, um, Another example he gave me about obliterating is the headmaster. As in Uganda, many of us who have had a privilege to go to school, you know that by the time the headmaster calls for you, it is bad news. By the time you're called to the headmaster's office, it is really, really bad. So I'm imagining you've been accused of a crime, both accused or caught in the wrong, and right? And the prefects are taking you, or this teacher who just hates you so much, and they are taking you to the headmaster's office. And once you reach there, the headmaster says, I don't see any reason for expelling you. You've done no wrong. Return to class. Now, those people who have been there understand the joy of being told to return to class when you know you deserve to be punished. There is that joy. And, and then you're sort of like, you know that you did wrong, but then you're like, are you, are you saying I go back to are you Are you serious right now? Yes, and there is that joy. Because why? The headmaster is the highest power. Ooh, sunshine coming through. The headmaster is the highest power, and the teachers, the prefects, they are just lesser powers. The judgment that he is considered is the highest power. Who is God? And so the lesser powers, the people condemning you, the people who try to, to stone the adulterous woman, God, Jesus asked them, if you've never seen, be the first one to cast a stone. They also realize that, hey, we've also been there. That's a different story. But then you notice that the highest power was the headmaster. He, his judgment... Is, is is what matters most and so it doesn't matter if if, you, if if the teacher has caught you doing the bad act or a dark cornering or what it doesn't it does not matter now the devil of course may, may is represented by these people he wants to accuse you before the father right and the first thing i've forgotten now why why god's people are perishing it's because they lack the knowledge they lack the knowledge that god has obliterated that god has forgotten their sins now when the enemy comes to accuse them they're coming with the guilt they're crying like oh 
done it, I've done it, I've done it. And then you don't care to know what God thinks. God is saying, I don't, I I know all things, but I don't know this about you. Hey, let me tell you, you can look at the York case and you say, like, what it is, yo, it is what it is. And so the devil loses power over you. Sin itself loses power over you to condemn you in the presence of the Father. Because sin that has been bringing judgment and condemnation before you, it, God has push, destroyed it, obliterated, blotted it out. So it can't come because, you know, God and sin can't exist. So if you want communion with the Father and then you keep embracing your sin, forget about it because it's still going to torment you and you're not going to enjoy fellowship with the Father. So it's either you believe that you're the righteousness of God as Second Corinthians 5.21 states or stick to your sin and you'll miss out on all the good stuff. Uh, Proverbs I've forgotten why it says it says that evil pursues sinners. So every time you embrace, every time you 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 keep holding on to your sin, evil is pursuing you. So watch out for what you want, you want best. So God has decided to have selective amnesia as far as your sin is concerned. That's what my pastor uh, usually says. That he may love on you without hindrance. Remember the story I already said, if you're in love with someone and you know they're going to screw you up all the time, you have to decide to forget you know forget what wrongs they're going to do to you in order for you to love on them beautifully so your state of holiness is his responsibility your responsibility is to believe that your sins he will remember no more hallelujah yours is to believe that your sins yours is to believe that god is not a man that he should lie right god is not a man that should lie if your said is going to not remember your sins i don't see a i even didn't see the point of you Coming to say, God, I did this, and he's going to say, You did what? I'm going to, you did what? He's not going to have any, he's not going to have any memory of it. So it's pointless. The repentance they talk about is changing your way, changing the direction you've been taking, right? You're changing. It's confessing, of course, confessing is encouraged to one another, but. I mean, why do you need to confess to God? He already knows. You get, if he's all known, but then he has said that he has forgotten. Who are you to remind God? Like, don't you fear? Me, I fear. Don't you fear? Don't you fear the higher power? Like, who are you to tell the headmaster? You're lying. He has the... Don't you fear? Don't you want your job? <laughs> You're the teacher. Don't you fear? My friend, no, I fear. I fear God. So, like, let's learn our place. If he has said he has forgotten, let us also forget. I beg, let us also forget. What a difficult I have. I also don't know. I know nothing. I know nothing ill of myself. So it's just beautiful. Um, C.S. Lewis says, if God forgives us, we must forgive ourselves. Otherwise, if we don't, we are setting ourselves as a higher tribunal than God. And that's just not right. Because if God has said, I've forgiven you, and then you keep saying, no, you're no. Are you, are you greater than God? Hey? Are you? So it is what it is, guys. It is what it is. Now, why forget our sins? Why should you know? I'm starting to wind up here. God is saying uh, in Isaiah 118, come now, let us reason together. The New Living Translation says, the new, sorry, yeah, New Living Translation. Come now, let's settle this. Let us settle this. Say, let's settle this. Though your sins are like scarlet, I will make them as white as no i i see i i will make them not you not that you should sacrifice no that's why he came through jesus christ that he may fix it that i will make i will make them as white as no this double literating is talking about though they are red like crimson i will make them as white as wool he is doing the blotting out guys he's doing the blotting of your transgressions and so you can't reason with god if you're walking with the guilt that comes with sin Fear will continue in your life. And and first John 4 18 says, um, there is no fear in love. He fears is not made perfect in love. So you can't say you love God and yet you're a sinner. You know, like I've already said, God plus sin, don't connect. So he decided to forget. So for God's case, he decided to forget so that he may love on you unconditionally. Unlike humans who love people somehow conditionally because oh he did wrong to me last time so you sort of you know give back some grace or some love and for us it is to uh for god it's to love on us and for us to i won't give us the reasons i've been pinpointing on them all over the place i'm going to want them very well it's it's for you to stop fearing god top you know with boldness uh, it's you to walk in 
the full inheritance. Uh, if you remember the, the parable of the prodigal son, when the younger son came back, the older son was saying, Father, I've been here serving you and you've never been giving me a calf. And the father said, like, all I have is yours. Does that mean even, did he even need to ask? I was just thinking about it. You, I, I thought about it. I, I, I thought about this thing, you guys. And I noticed that maybe the firstborn feared to ask that calf from the father because he had a guilt that told him that he had not performed well enough or he was not good enough for his father. And that's what's happening to many of us. God is saying, all of this is just, but you don't know, just as a ha. With this thing that I did last time, I don't think you'll give me the calf. No, because they, and another son has come and so it provokes you to bring out what's beneath you. And so it was just so bad. But God said, all oh, that I have is yours, you know, that the father when he, when he mentioned that. So um, as I conclude right now, I want to let you know the reasons why he has chosen to forget your sins that you may understand your responsibility that is to believe and his is to blot out your sins two that you might reason together reason together reason together sitting down with god and say hey what's the direction to life today because you can't do that god will come and he wants to reason with you but then for your mindset he's telling you no you can't reason with god you're too unholy you can't sit where he is like, oh you know that you're not worthy you're not worthy you're not worthy and yet Christ's blood made you well that you may sit on his throne again, that he may be with you, that he may commune with you, unlike in the Old Testament where he was behind the veil and the Holy of Holies, and it's only one priest that used to come and see him once a year. Once a year, guys! God wants to communicate with you every day. Like, why would God create you and then he communication between you and him is that? rare if that makes sense like i mean that beats it's no something's off so that you might reason with him and you discuss with him like father son father daughter yes father's day mm -hmm, it's coming up happy father's day <laughs> god <laughs> Yes, that you may not fear him that you may dwell in perfect love that you may approach him without fear but of boldness. Hebrews 4, 16. Because going to the throne, you can't approach the throne when you feel like you're dirty, you're rugged. But if you come knowing that he has already dealt with it, he has forgotten about it, hey! Put on a bounce. Put on a bounce. As we go like, what's up, dad? Yo, 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 what's good? I need a calf. <laughs> Isn't this good news? Uh, yes, he has decided to forget your sins that you may ask of him nations and all the earth. Psalms 278, because if you've seen the story, I've already told you about the elder son who, in the parable of the prodigal son, because if he thought, he thought the father didn't want to give him yet the father. So the father, in, 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 in fact, wanted to give him much more. So that means the more you believe that you've been forgiven, the more you can ask of God freely. Otherwise, if you feel like you've not been forgiven, you're going to hold back. You're going to be like, I can't even ask God for this thing because if I've messed up. So, Drop that mentality today. Today, he's saying, I, even I, have blotted out your transgressions. Ah, for my own sake and your sins, I'll remember no more. Remember no more. And if God has forgotten your sins, even you, even you, you, who are you? Remember your sins. I'd be who are you? Huh? For what? Remember them for what? For what? For what? In fact, this reminds me, in, when we go to heaven, there's no book of sins, if you've noticed. No, there's a book of life. I think Book of Life and Death in Revelation. I've not seen the one that book of holding wrongs. And this is being taught in religion. And I don't know where the doctrine came from. That's where the devil is having people. And then they're there rotating, 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 rotating. Missing out on all the fun that God has to give. So he's saying that he may ask of him nations and all the earth. And he will give it. You know, he's, he says, ask of me the nations and I'll give them to you. Uh, if you read Psalms, I don't have my Bible here. Let me try to. To, 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 to read it for you uh, quickly. Da, 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 Thank you, Jesus. Isn't he good? Isn't God good? Isn't God good? Psalms 2, it says, I will. Sorry. Verse 7 says, uh, Today I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possessions. It's hard for you to ask for the God of the things when you have that block of sin. Unlike the prodigal son, so go ahead and ask. Uh, and that you may develop a new 
consciousness altogether. Not to be always conscious of your sin, of your sin, of your sin. Yet God wants to discuss matters with you. He wants to give you things. He says he wants to give you the secrets of 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 of. of he wants to give you the riches, the the treasures of secret places and the riches of you know hidden things. He wants to give you so much more. So get sin out of the way. Tell it it has no no power over you today because God your Father, God your Father, ha. Forgotten all your sins, past, present, and future for your sons and your grandchildren and your great grandchildren. Ah, that you may cherish his love for you, that you may walk in and talk to him all day, all night, all noon. Oh, oof, just bask in his love. So I pray you may you that uh, I pray that you've been blessed by this message. It blessed me so much. I hope, I pray that God continues shedding more light on the message that He has sent you out today, uh, in 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 this year's Father's Day to you. That yes, you may understand that He loves you, and He has done that much to make sure that nothing will separate you from His love. Because He said, neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons, nor things to come, nor things, no things to come, no things past. These are your things can separate you from His love, and that's what He has done. To endeavor to, to to ensure that it shall not separate him from you. Now it's your turn. Now it's your turn to believe that he has forgotten all your sins. That it's a two way, not just God looking at you and then you looking at him, but then you two turning to God and then embracing this truth, embracing this love, receiving his hug, hugging him back, for he has forgotten your sins. Hey, what am I doing to the screen? Sorry. So God bless you. May this shed your more light to you or the rest of your week. He loves you. He loves you. Um, Jeremiah 33, 3. Is it Jeremiah 31, 3? Says that, um, expect my love. Expect my love and more love. Uh, that's the message version. He has loved on you with loving kindness. So, yes, all of this is possible because he has gotten that one big thing that we are always battling about, that we are always making um, a big deal out of every time we come to meet him. He has taken it out of your way. And the devil has no power to condemn you with it. It has lost its power. Once you know that God, God, the maker of heaven and earth, the one who deserves the right to know everything, has forgotten about it. So it doesn't matter whether who you, whether you, whether which doctor you it or not. It has lost its power. And don't let it control you or guilt trip you ever again. God bless you. Bye-bye.